and welcome back to the Star Wars Expanded Universe, narrated by Disney, Walker Lucasfilm, Triple you Slice It, Legends. <clears throat> I am getting over a cold still, so I'm going to try to make this relatively quick, but today I have for you some more Dark Times material for you. Starting with Dark Times issues 6 to 10, without spoilers. In these issues, we get reintroduced to Kukruk, the Jedi who is a Padawan in the Jedi Council Acts of War series, who popped in and out during the Republic series. Um, and now we follow him again. We get to see him during Order 66. We get to see what he's been doing since Order 66. And it's all really great. I never realized how much Cook Crook could be so intimidating and terrifying. Because there's a scene where he goes to attack like the clone trooper trying to harm children. And you see like his face and everything. And it, it's it's terrifying. Whippets are no joke. Don't mess with them. On the other side, we follow the characters that we've met um, in the previous uh, series. However, the Jedi Dash Janir has separated from the smuggler group. He's gone off to do his own thing. So now we're following the rest of the crew. Um, and so we're dealing with um, Bomo um, Greenbark, whatever his name is, as he's dealing with the loss of his family. Oh. Uh. And they go to do this deal that goes bad, and it's fine, but some of the characters don't make it out because this is the dark times. Um, then, um, and stuff happens with the crook without spoilers as well, and his uh, Jedi younglings that he saved from the purge. And before you continue on with the dark times series, we have a short story called. The Last One Standing by uh, Jude Watson, who did the Jedi Apprentice series, did the Jedi Quest series, and will do another series that will be coming to uh, in a little bit. But um, it's fine. It's a little tiny story. The Sand People have stolen um, the water evaporator from the Lars homestead. They did not hurt them. Obi-Wan goes to see what's up. Omen's like, look, I appreciate you coming to check on us, but we don't need your help. And so he, of course, goes out of his way, regardless of what he says, to go and help and bring the thing back. What, what Obi-Wan is doing isn't that difficult. It does take place after, I think, the Kenobi book. However, it's not, um, it's not much. We do get some more inside Obi-Wan Kenobi's head during this time, because you gotta remember this is just a couple months, at most four months after episode three. Like, it hasn't been a long time. And so he's still dealing with what happened to um, Anakin. Overall, though, is it essential? Do you need this in your chronological order? I mean, you basically get most of this in the Kenobi novel, but there is some further insight here that's nice, but you don't need it. That being said, I enjoyed the little short story, and I recommend that you do read it. After this, we have the Dark Times crossover with the other comic books that were going on around the time, Rebellion, Legacy, and Knights of the Old Republic, with uh, Dark Times issues 11 to 12, Vector. Now, I remember watching Matt Wilkins' uh, original series. Now he's doing his rereads, but his original series of, the, of his Matt's Expanding Universe. And he talked about the Vector storyline specifically, I think all the way back. <sighs> he, t he talked about the Vector storyline and how it's probably be easier to just read it in one, one sitting, go throughout all the timelines. You could do that. However, I think it actually worked really effectively here. Because you got to remember, I've been reading everything that I possibly can in chronological order as best. I know how. I still love from my weapons. But I have been doing that. 
So get this, in-universe, it's been 4,000 years since the KOTOR comics. In-universe. And for me, real-time, starting from the very beginning to where I am now, it's been a full year. I started my earliest in the timeline story stuff all the way back at the very beginning of 2021, and now it's 2022. So for me, it's been a solid year since I've read about Celeste Morn. So when I get into this comic, and even if it's just a hologram, see Zane Garrick and Griff on a panel. I mean, my goodness, the nostalgia, the happiness at seeing them again, even if it's only a quick little recording. Seeing Celeste Morn again. It's been 4,000 years. It's been a year since I've read about this character. And now here she is again. And of course, it's the Dark Times era, so we got Vader, right? We, so we got all this cool stuff alongside it. And is it anything particularly special? No. <sighs> we do during this crossover, which does end up making this crossover important to the overall series. It's not like something you can just skip and move on. Another character that we've known, seemingly at least, dies off. So that kind of sucks. But overall, and this is kind of short because this is mostly just comics, but I really enjoyed everything that I read here. Um, seeing Vader kick butt is always cool. Seeing Celeste Morn again was cool. Getting seen uh, Zane and, and Griff <coughs> sorry, for a second was cool. It was overall fantastic. But I'm next, guys. I have one short story for you. And the first novel by Michael Reeves called Coruscant Nights. I hope you all join me for that. Until next time, guys. May the Force be with you. See ya.